It's been a successful first week in the NCAA for the Sunbirds. The volleyball team traveled to Hawaii to prove they belong among the top Division II programs, while the men's soccer team picked up a shutout victory for their first NCAA win. We'll also talk to former FPU track star Ethan DeYoung about his experience at the Olympic trials. It's all coming up right now on Inside Fresno Pacific Athletics. Volleyball was the first team from FPU to make the journey across the Pacific to bring that California competitive spirit to the islands of Hawaii. We sat down with Sunbird Volleyball players and coaches to talk about the trip to Hawaii and what is to come on the court this season. Um, Hawaii was great. Um, it's Hawaii for one. What it was like? Yeah. It was sunny. It was a totally new experience. It was really fun. And nice. <laughs> it was really fun. We had a bunch of Hawaiian dudes like helping us out in the water which was really cool. One thing that I was surprised about is uh, they all wanted to go surfing. <laughs> I had never been surfing before and so I was kind of scared and we were all walking down to the beach to rent our surfboards and we were all talking about sharks and we were all psyching ourselves out but it turned out to be a really fun time and we all caught waves and everyone got to stand up and ride them. It's so fun playing in a totally different place because you there's just so many new adventures and just things to do and look at and see. It was, it was hard to adjust, but it was fun and we made it worth it. And it was just so cool to see the people and we got to check out like local places and drive around a bit. So it was really cool. Yeah, it was really amazing to see some of the girls I played with over the summer and then also one of, the, one of my teammates from high school. And so it's just great to see other people that you know doing well. It was, it was better than we expected. Uh, the competition was... Um, you know, it was different, and uh, the defense on both sides of the net were, was so much better that rallies lasted forever. I mean, the first set, the first point that we watched probably lasted a minute, which in volleyball, that's, you know, a marathon. Throughout the tournament, I felt that um, we really just started to gel towards the end because the beginning, you know, we were just kind of trying new things, and it's the nice thing about our team this year is that we just have a lot of depth. and. Um, people are ready to jump in at any given time and we talked, we had team meetings and we just said regardless of who plays right now we know that we have people on the bench who are ready to come in. If someone's having a rough game then a another player is ready to go in. It doesn't, even, it doesn't even matter who starts really. Well I think it was just nerves at first and like I think it was Emily said every player is so capable of just stepping onto the court and doing an amazing job and I think that really has to do a big part of it. All these girls work so hard and you can take anyone off the bench and put them into the position and they'll do the job and get it done. You couldn't tell that a lot of the girls were new on the team. The freshmen stepped up. Um, a lot of the girls just, they were kind of thrown in and um, they played really well and everyone was ready to go off the bench. So if someone was struggling, then we had other options um, to be put into the game. At the end of the season, I think we should end up on top. I think we have the talent to do so. And now it's just a matter of the heart and the discipline. If the discipline is there, then I think we can definitely make it. You know, I, we're shooting for the stars. I, we think we can do really, really well. And I, I mean, I think we can win everything as long as we maintain our focus, but it's not gonna be easy. I mean, we, we lose focus once and, and that's it. I mean, um, everybody is really good and we have the talent though, we have the ability. It's just the matter of who's gonna play well each night. At this year's U.S. Track and Field Olympic Trials, former athlete Ethan DeYoung was a representative of not only his school, but also something much bigger. We got the inside scoop on how Ethan's time spent at Fresno Pacific shaped his career both on and off the track. I've always thought about, well, you know, that'd be really cool if I could do that. Like, I've, I've always wanted to go to the Olympics. I think that would be awesome. I continued to compete after nationals um, when, you know, my season's done because I wanted to improve my mark to try and get in. Because I'm thinking, at that, at that point, I can do this. Like, I can get into this meet. And then I find out two days before that I'm actually ranked 22nd and that I'm in. And so it was like, okay, it's go time. I'm walking through this, uh, like, fenced-off tunnel that the athletes walk through to get to uh, the stadium. And I'm, 
and I'm just kind of looking over the fence because I'm a little bit taller than most and I can just see the whole stadium and there were so many people there to the point where it was so I was so nervous that like I didn't even know how to warm up anymore we start to jump and um, a couple of them I had they, they, they could have been potentially a big jump uh, and my right leg on my last faves would give out on me every time and at this point it's just like well you know it's all about the experience now you know try and get into finals if I don't you know there's 2016 so you know I just went out and I did as well as I could and I ended up doing better than coming in which was kind of surprising because I jumped worse than my mark that got me in a lot of times in track and field it's not necessarily about your mark that gets you in it's what you do on the day of competition you know I had gotten into a little huddle with some of the guys I did what I usually do at you know big meets like that um, I asked people if they'd like for me to pray for them it was it was great because I got to show them a little bit about what I'm about to show them you know I'm here to represent FPU and to represent Christ most of all and I wanted you guys to experience you know the love that I experience every day. It was a jam-packed opening week for FPU that included a Saturday night soccer doubleheader at Ramirez Field. Here with a look at the highlights is Inside Fresno Pacific Athletics producer Brandon Tripp. CSU Monterey Bay in town for a showdown with the Sunbirds and what a show it was. Just over five minutes to go in the first half, and Paul Eastless has his shot blocked, but Fabrizio Nazare cleans up the loose ball and rips it in for the one to nothing lead. Moments later, FPU on the attack again, and Alvaro Nogales looks for the cross, and Luke Tyler pulls it just wide with the bicycle kick. Now Tyler on the other end going up and fighting to clear the header, part of a stingy defense that gave up very few chances and no goals on the night. In the second half now, and it's Julian Mataliano. He likes it from the top of the box, but a tremendous save by Otters keeper Corey Calder to keep it 1-0. 53rd minute, Nogales wrestles the ball away and finds Islas who pokes it past Calder. Sunbirds take a 2-0 lead. Interesting moment here in the game, the sprinkler system malfunctions and begins watering the field. Problem is, is that the game is still going. Sunbirds would actually score a goal before play stopped and take a 3-0 lead. That is the way this one would end. Sunbirds get the shutout victory 3-0. Well, it's exciting. It's exciting to, uh, to finally get the one that uh, we felt we should have had the other day. But... I thought we, we did a much better job of moving the ball around. I felt that our three midfielders uh, had more time to move the ball forward to our strikers. Um, they played really high, a high defensive line back four that allowed us to get behind them. Uh, we have a solid defense. Um, Yvonne in the back with me, CY, Adrian, Julian got hurt at the beginning. We have, a, we have an awesome back line and Steven in the back came up huge tonight, made some big saves. So. Um, we're going to have a good season. We're going to get a lot of shutouts this season. I'm excited about that, too. I mean, the shutout was, was massive. Uh, we needed that for our team. Uh, we just need to take this and take it into the rest of the season. we got this momentum now and uh, just keep rolling with it. Southern Oregon and Fresno Saturday night to take on the Sunbirds in FPU season opener. Let's jump to the 32nd minute of the first half where Amanda Dudek is stuffed on the shot attempt, but that's okay because Jay Faltiera is there to clean it up and put it in the net. Sunbirds up 1-0. Midway through the second half, now 63rd minute, and Julie Zamzow leaves it for Stephanie Carr, who pokes it past keeper Sarah King, and we are all tied up. That is the way it would stay. We'd head to OT now, just two minutes into the extra frame, and Stephanie Carr does it again, this time from the set piece. Raiders win 2-1. The Sunbirds fought back Tuesday night to earn a scoreless draw with Division I opponent CSU Bakersfield. It was very disappointing loss, but I think it ended up fueling us to do better for our next game. And so I think it was worth the while having the heartache that night so that we would play that much better yesterday. It was very exciting. 
I give all the credit to the defense, Clara and Colleen and Carr and Dora. They played pristine the whole game. But we learned that we can do a lot more than we think we're capable of. To be against Ty in a D1 school, we thought we would never be able to, but we helped build our confidence last night. And I think that will play a big role in the rest of this year. Thanks, Brandon. Here's a look at the rest of the scores from Fresno Pacific's first week in the NCAA. The men's soccer team fell in their first ever NCAA match 2-1 to Cal State Stanislaus last Thursday night. Freshman Alvaro Nogales scored his first career goal in the loss for the Sunbirds. Water Polo managed a split of their opening weekend tournament. After falling to Whittier College 11-8 in their opening match, they came back and crushed Citrus College 22-7. Volleyball walked away from the Outrigger Hotels and Resorts invite in Honolulu, Hawaii with a 3-1 record, dropping their lone match to one of the top teams in the West Region, Seattle Pacific, 3-2. The Sunbirds came back and beat both host schools sweeping Chaminade and surviving a nail-biter with Hawaii Pacific in a 3-2 win. Hoopia Inc. came home with tournament MVP honors and freshman Hannah Butler was named the top libero of the tournament. Get up off your couches this week and join in supporting the amazing teams that play here at Fresno Pacific. Volleyball will have four matches this weekend in the Route 92 showdown in Hayward, including a matchup against PacWest foe Holy Names. This Saturday, September 8th, men's and women's soccer will face Cal State San Marcos. The women play at 5 and the men play at 7 at Ramirez Field. If you enjoy watching soccer, plus wrestling, and add a little water, then you'd love to come out and watch the men's water polo team in their first home match this weekend as they take on American River in a doubleheader. The first game starts at 1.30 at Sunnyside Aquatic Center. Don't forget that you can stay up to date with all the latest Fresno Pacific Athletics news at fpuathletics.com and on Twitter at FPU Sunbirds. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time right here on Inside Fresno Pacific Athletics.